Hey pilots, welcome to Jetworks Build Videos. In today's video we're going to build the fantastic McDonnell Douglas Phantom F4. Before we crack open the glue and start building, this is where you have to choose your powertrain. Whether that be a pusher, single prop version or the EDF. Choice of twin 50mm, 64 or 70. I chose the 70mm. Throughout the build video you see I've taken full advantage of the amazing 3D printed parts that Craig produces. It's not a requirement to use the 3D printed parts, but I just think they're fantastic. It gives that real scale look, scale finish, and when in terms of the thrust tubes, the intakes, it also helps the air flow I feel, rather than um, fabricating and, and laminating some foam parts. I love them, I can't speak highly enough of them, um, and they're just fantastic, even down to 3D printed pilots. But as I say, you know, you can still carry on in the build without the use of a 3D printer. The next step in the guide is to glue the 6mm carbon tube into the slot in the wing and that's for all versions, whether that be the pusher or whether it be an EDF unit. Then just trim, trim the wing plate, the slots to suit your chosen EDF setup. As for the wing plate, Make sure it's on a nice flat working surface. Get some low tack masking tape. Just apply it softly um, over over the top of your Depron. That way, just make sure there's no gaps in it to allow any resin um, or epoxy or whatever it is you choose to um, use to set the carbon spar in place. As you turn it over, you'll see that the Depron markings are still on the bottom. That's just me choosing what's, what's the best finish side. Um, that I'd like to see on the top. Get a wee implement, wee tool, just pick out gently uh, at the corner of the, the wing spar where we've um, pre-cut pre the slot. Gently pick it out. I do it this way so that there's no no gaps, no deviation in the, in the foam itself. You've got a nice even cut all the way along. Get your pre-marked, um, pre-cut carbon spar and just offer it up, just test fit. Test fit it makes make sure it fits properly. There's no gaps at either side or, or needs any more trimming. When you're happy with it, get your epoxy um, and mix it up. I use a set of scales when I'm mixing larger quantities just to ensure that both the hardener and the resin are at the same levels and, and it just makes sure that you, you know for sure that the, the resin's going to set pretty solid. As you're mixing it up, it starts off quite clear, um, and the more you mix it, it goes quite cloudy. Just keep ensuring that you mix it properly and thoroughly, and then it will actually start to go a bit clearer. Once that's done, I'll get again some more um, masking tape, offer it up to both sides of the slot, just for cleanliness, so if there's any spillages, um, it doesn't, it's not, it's not left over the wing. I'll fill up the slot, and then just gently to the sides, just tease out the epoxy just to make sure that every every area is covered. Get your carbon spar, put that inside, just gently move it about to ensure that the, the bottom of it's coated pretty well. Get the, um, the rest of the epoxy, pour it over the top of the spar, a wee bit of clean up there and then get a scrap piece of foam and just spread it nice and evenly across the top just to get that nice smooth finish. Once you're happy that um, all, all gaps are covered, remove the masking tape. A couple of batteries on it just to make sure that there's no natural bevels in, in the foam itself. Tidy up, get that to the side and allow the epoxy to dry. Twenty minutes later, and the epoxy should be set. Remove batteries, flip it over, have a wee test, and then again, just gently pull off the masking tape, just to reveal a fantastic, nice flat finish, providing you've done it on a flat working surface. Next step in the guide is forward fuse latch belly and bulkhead number one. As you can see here, I've got the fuselage sides and the fuselage belly. What I'm doing is just gently pulling it across the table just to form it and get some curves in it 
to try and get as close to the base of the fuselage sides itself. Once I'm happy with it, it's, it's matched up as, as close as you can get. Small piece of masking tape underneath it. And again, mix up just a tiny spot of, of resin and epoxy. I'm just using a dot um, of both the resin and a dot of the hardener. And as always, just make sure you mix it quite thoroughly. Once you're happy that it's mixed properly, just apply a thin bead of glue to the edge of the, the fuselage former. Attach it to the wing plate itself, just lining up the markings from the plans. And then an additional piece of masking tape on the top, just to ensure that it's, it's, it's fixed properly and nice and flat, and the, the glue joints are flush together. Once you're happy with that, moving on to bulkhead number one, just a, a spot of yuho pour. Um, I think it's really good glue, and, and the less you use um, is, is, is better, gives a better adhesion. Now, it is a contact adhesive, meaning that um, once you put it on, it will take an allocated amount of time, 10 to 15 minutes to set and cure. Um, but what I tend to do sometimes is just let it sit 5-10 minutes before I actually put it on to the piece that it's required to stick to. Bulkhead number 2 and forward fuselage rear support piece. Again, with a tiny piece of epoxy, just mark around the, the base of bulkhead number 2. Make sure you've got a small piece of tape underneath the wing plate just to stop the end pieces coming through. Using a scrap piece of foam, just wipe away any of the excess glue that you have around the base of the bulkhead number two. The rear support piece, use some Yuhu Paw underneath and just smudge it around on the wing plate just to make sure there's good adhesion. Next step is the corner reinforcement strips for the fuselage and the fuselage inner sides. Each strip, as they're laid out, I'll take one piece, make sure that they're mirrored copies, and then lay some Yuhu Paw on one side, put them closely together, attach them, and give it a smudge again. Slide them up and down just to make sure that the glue is evenly spread out on the piece. Once you're happy with that, small dot in the corners of the the bulkheads where you're about to attach the fuselage sides. This just ensures that the end pieces of the support strips are actually going to glue on the contact surface as well. Using the same procedure as before, do the same with the second set. Once you're happy that they're in place, just slide them and make sure that they're flush along the edges as that's where we're going to attach the fuselage sides inner. Once you have the fuselage sides inner, there is markings on the plans on the trailing edge that requires a 45 degree bevel edge. Here I have a, a metal ruler and using a sharp hobby craft blade, just gently cut through in a couple of passes. Don't try and go for it in the, in the one um, pass, as sometimes um, Depron is quite easy to tear if your blade's not absolutely sharp. So just take your time, making sure you've got a clean edge, and do the same on both surfaces. Once you start to cut the second piece, just make sure that both pieces are mirrored and it's not in the same direction that you're cutting. Once you've got both 45 degree bevels cut, offer them up to each other and just make sure it's a nice snug fit. Test fit the fuselage sides inner, put them up against the, your build and make sure that the locating holes on bulkhead 2 match up on the fuselage sides. On the forward support pieces, this is where we're applying the Yuhu pour. Taking care to make sure all contact surfaces have an application of glue along them. 
give it a couple of minutes just to air dry so that when we actually go to connect in the fuselage sides in her, it gets a better, quicker, tighter bond. On the 45 degree bevels, small bead of glue, offer both of them up to each other and give it a good rub just to make sure that the whole contact surface has got a good even application of glue. Once you're happy with that, offer them up to the build itself. Starting with the key locations on bulkhead number two. Slot them in nice and tight and careful. And then I use some masking tape just to hold them in place so that while I'm moving along the rest of the fuselage sides, there's no movement or disturbance um, of the location of the pieces. Moving on to the, the trailing edge, the bevel cuts again small pieces of masking tape just to make sure that the the bond is 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 best and as strong as bond as we can achieve and then moving to the front like i was saying earlier make sure that the fuselage side fuselage sides inner are stuck to the support pieces that's where the bond's going to be so that later on in the build when we start to shape and sand we're cutting away at the angles, removing the, the mountains and reducing the valleys. The next step in the guide for all versions is the canopy support strips, including the magnet bridge panel, the lower bridge panel onto your build. With the canopy support strips, like other pieces previously, I'll get the mirrored version, bead of glue along one, one, one side and then offer both of them up together, give them a good rub uh, and make sure there's a, an, an even spread of glue on the piece that you're about to attach. In the corners, just a wee spot, a yoo-hoo, um, in, in the end pieces just to make sure that there's good adhesion all around. Slide them up and down just to offer them into place make sure there's a nice fit then moving on to the bridge panel again quick test fit make sure the bridge panel fits in there and doesn't need any further trimming a small thin application of you who pour slide it into place and making sure that again it's nice and flush with the top where the canopies um, will will go later on in the build as for the the bridge lower piece working on the outside add some you who slide it about and then use a piece of tape to hold it in place and allow the glue to set. The next step in the build is a bridge panel middle and top and in the cell sides. Using the middle and the top with some application of Yoohoo Pour, smoothened along it so it's a nice thin layer, then taped down with some glue. The next step we're test fitting the chosen EDF. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using the FMS 70mm. Trimmed out the, the bulk heads just to make sure there's a nice good smooth fit and I cut a little recess hole just for the the motor wires to come through. So you test fit into the bulk heads and just make sure you align the front edge of the EDF housing to the front face of the forward bulk head. Have it as close as you can if you have the bell on just make sure you get a nice neat trim. Note that the bulk heads are deliberately leaning forward as well. At this point, I've taken the opportunity to offer up the EDF intake and mark it on the wing plate so that I know where I'm going to be gluing it later on in the build. And here we are back to the nacelle sides. Again, quick test fit just to make sure it fits. Once you're happy that everything matches up, apply a thin bead of Yoohoo pour along the contact surfaces and just where the EDF mount is due to go after a recent test fit 
apply a couple of thin beads of glue there as well so that when you put the unit back in this time it's in there all, all set in the one sort of move. As you can see on the wee tabs on the EDF units itself, applying a small bead of glue just where the, the slots are on the bulkhead mounts. Slide it into position, offer up the tabs on the cell sides and we're on to the next step. Getting the lower rear belly panel parts ready. As you can see on the plans, there are some lines marked across the horizontal axes of the belly panel plates and these are to be sanded and feathered out to the edge. As you can see, we've been quite liberal in putting the yoo onto both surfaces. Once you've got a good amount onto it, um, on the first part, you see me um, spreading it up and down the wing and just like this part as well, the outer outer surface. It's just to spread the glue out and just make sure all, all areas have, have got a nice thin application of glue and it gives a good bond. Next step is the EDF intake. As I previously marked it, you can see the pen lines there. Again, just a good, good amount of glue in there, enough to give it a good bond when you put the intake in. Gently peel apart then the cell sides and then pull them back together and then that's the unit fixed, fit and, and ready for the next step. Here we are on the rear corner reinforcer pieces like I've done throughout the build. Get the two pieces together, thin application of Yoohoo and smear it around to make sure there's a nice smooth um, even, even layer. Once off of that up to the fuselage you can see I'm marking it there with a pen just to show where I'd like to trim it back a bit before we actually make the last um, gluing and, and, and putting the piece into position. Carefully with a sharp scalpel and um, just, just gently trim away the excess foam. Like I say, make sure that you've got a, a nice sharp hobby craft blade and, and, and as before, don't attempt to just go through and make the straight cut straight away in one pass. Just gently two, three, four passes, whatever it takes to get you through to the shaping that they actually want. Size them up together. Once you have the lower corners glued into the fuselage, I took the opportunity to add the 3D printed thrust tube. Looks fantastic. That way I can make sure I've got a nice, nice flush finish and attached to the, the rear of the EDF bulkhead. Off camera, I used the same principle with the, the upper reinforcers. There's four long ones and four short ones. Small bead of glue along it, put the two pieces together, rub it um, nice nice and flat, give it a, a good squish. That way you've got a, a, a thin application of glue on both sides. Like I was saying, unfortunately off camera, um, I did that, but I'm sure you you all know how to attach two pieces of um, Depron together. I offered it up to the fuselage sides just to trim the right amount that I needed for the, the rear of the thrust tube. And as I'm doing with the rest, just get a pen or a pencil, whatever you have handy. Offer it up to the sides and, and line it up to the, the EDF bulkheads here. Sharp Hobbycraft knife and, and like all other cuts that we're making to um, thicker pieces of laminated Depron. Just a couple of passes with the tip of the blade to cut through. Small application of Yoohoo around all contact surfaces and just put it in place where it's intended to go. Make sure it's flush against the, the top of the fuselage sides. That way when it comes to putting down um, the, the turtle deck later on in the build, you're going to get a flush finish all the way across the top and all the uh, contact surfaces um, will have a good adhesion to where you have the glue mounted. In this part, we're using the, 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 the short corner reinforcers. And at the latter end, um, I've, I've trimmed away just corners like we did on the, the lower reinforcement pieces just to make sure that there's a nice, nice comfortable fit around the thrust tube and there's there's no squeezing um to to put in there 
and it's a couple of test fits, make sure you're happy with it. A small application of glue and then, then in with it. Here we are moving on to the intake parts. Um, again, offer up your, your long reinforcer strip. Just trim it, test fit um, against the, the, the intake itself just to see you're happy with it. If not, back with a hobby knife and another small small trim just to get as much off as possible. Offer up, that looks pretty good. Another just slight part just at the top. And then get ready to add some glue. Looks like a good good tight fit there. I'm happy with that. So we'll add again just a small piece of um you who spread it about, just make sure your contact surfaces and I've I've done a wee bit on top of the EDF mount as well so that that not not the EDF mount sorry the the intake that way the the depron that we're putting on the fuselage sides supports the sides of the the thrust intake tube as well moving on to the last pieces um of the corner upper reinforcer I'm cutting it at a 45 degree angle and this just improves the airflow coming in from the intakes to actually get into the mouth of the EDF unit as well. You don't want to leave just the square pieces of laminated foam in there. Cut it. Um, you could go to the next level and, and smoothen it off, sanding it um, and with a you know a wooden dowel piece, piece of sandpaper and get a rounded finish. I'm more than happy with the 45 degree angle as it says in the, the bill guide. Place it in, small piece of depron, smudge it about so you've got a good contact once again and just allow it to set. Next step, it's the exhaust bulkhead. So again, once it's it's dried, a small test fit with the, the bulkhead mount. Once you're happy with that, small amount of glue around the contact surfaces and the outside of where you think it's going to fit. Um, here I've added some to the the thrust tubes exhaust itself just so that on the the inner surfaces of the exhaust bulkhead um, I'm, I'm sure that it's going to make a good contact a good bond all around the surfaces there and that way we've got a nice tight finish at the rear of the fuselage Next stage in the construction guide is the fuselage sides outer and the nose cone, including the nose cone aligner. Now, as you can see here, I've print, took in the opportunity again to use the fantastic 3D printed STL files that Craig offers. These are for the air intakes. I, I, I think they look absolutely gorgeous. Um, it also helps speed up the build. Um, when we're using 3D printed parts that we're not actually having to, you know, laminate or fabricate through foam. So, offering them up, I've got the fuselage sides there, the outer panels, and again, I get get kind of excited as we, as we get further on in the builds, as as you see the the pieces of foam, depron, um, whatever it is that you use, actually coming to life and taking shape of the the jet that you're building. So here I'm forming the foam. I usually do it on the corner of the table, just nice and gently. Push your fingers down on one part, um, the the outer side where you want the the curves to be, and just gently drag it across the corner. Slowly um, just putting an ever so slight bend or curve in the foam. Often it up to the, the fuselage nose here just to see that happy with the fit and get get as close to the shape as possible. This way it kind of helps that when you get to glue in the surface that when you put it on and attach it, it, it doesn't just pop off or fall off because it's quite close to the shape of the sides. Now, you've, I've put quite a good application of glue on there. You may think it's too much, however, it's it's enough to cover both sides just a nice thin application on both sides. If there was too much, it'd squeeze out the sides when you're actually um, rubbing the two pieces together. 
line it up with the front um, and, and checking on the plans as to where it's due to go and then just place it on, make sure you're happy with it and then that's it, stuck. Um, like I was saying earlier, it is contact adhesive and the less that you've got on, the better. The better it actually is. If there was more glue there, it would take longer to set and, and possibly fall off. <laughs> Again, just offering up the intakes and thinking, wow, it's going to look amazing when it's finished. The intakes just took a light sand after it was printed using the lightweight PLA. Again, fantastic um, product. I used to print in um, PLA Plus. Um, and then I kept seeing Craig and the guys, the, you know, the, the Jetworks community using the, the lightweight PLA and seeing the weight differences drop off. So there was only one way to go and that's use the lightweight PLA. So here we are, just adding a little bit of um, Yuhu inside the, the nose cone aligner. Stick the aligner in there and glue it and then offer up some glue around the contact surface of the, the nose cone. As it's contact adhesive, the Yoohoo pour, just offer it up a couple of times and pull away which allows the glue to become more tacky and get a better bond so that when you put it down, the nose cone just won't just fall off. It'll sit there nice and tight and it'll take less time to cure. Here I've printed the um, 3D canopy as well. Just to put it on and, and mark up the sizes of where we're due to sand it and get the overall shape of the nose to get as close to the scale model as possible. I use just a biro pen. You can use um, whatever you have at hand. Fine fine point um, pens um, are pretty, pretty good. That they Just a fine, fine layer ink that it gives off. Now at this point, we shouldn't actually be moving to the, the nose cone and the guide. However, um, I just can't stop myself sometimes. So here I am with a, a nice sharp razor blade and just slowly trimming off using the, the markings from the, the canopy to, to leave that line so that I don't go past it. Um, and, and coming from either the, the rear of the fuselage um, to the nose cone and just taking slight, slight shavings off um, line by line to to remove the the the, the peaks of the the depron down to um, the flat parts as, and as Craig um, describes it the mountains and the valleys just to get a nice nice overall shape um, before we actually go to sanding. I start with 120 grit sandpaper. It's quite rough. Work my way through to 150 to the 240 and finally on the 400 grit. And when we're, we're shaping, rather than using a, a wooden block on the sandpaper, I use this, uh, an old scrap piece of polystyrene. That way it's not too aggressive um, and you can get a, a little bit of give in your sanding block and it's nice and soft um, and you can get a, a, a fantastic shape. However, that's just me um, and that's what I've found when I'm, I'm sanding. Not that sanding's my favourite part. So here I am with a 120 grit removing as much as we can um, to get the, the basic overall shape and working down through the paper. As you can see, fantastic weather in Scotland. It's not often we get that outside sitting in the, in the sunlight sanding, but we take the opportunity and make the most of it when we can. Fantastic shape. Happy with that. After a brief spot of sunshine, it's good time to get back to the work table. Uh, we have here is the nacelle top, just offering it up to the fuselage and, and having a test fit. I've put in the ESC, wired it into the, the EDF and just adjusting the wires um, and making sure everything fits. Once I'm happy everything fits, then it's time to check the electrics. So here... We, we only have the ESC wired up, got a battery in, give a little thrust test just to make sure that we have the right orientation of the fan and the motor and, and we're getting the air blown out in the right, right direction. So I've removed the ESC, laid out all the electrics back in front of, of me on the, the build surface here and we're just adjusting the control horns, 
ready to accept um, linkage stoppers. So that the control rods, when we put into the, the final build surfaces, they're all ready and no more adjustments needing done on the fuselage itself once um, the servos are um, in place. Once they're all together, um, bind it to the receiver, add um, the servo arms, and just to check the, the final direction, knowing which servo you intend to put in and in, in what place for what control surface. Make sure they're all centered, um, working in the right orientation, and we're ready for the next stage. Next step in the construction guide is fitting in the sail top and the aft fuselage spine. As we had a pre-test fit earlier, um, we're happy that it slots into place. Install some of your electrics, um, be it the aileron servos and the wing plate. Apply some glue to the, the contact surfaces. Here I'm also adding some to the top of the 3D printed intake. That way all the surfaces um, have, have got a good adhesion so they accept the airflow pretty well, nothing flaps about on the inside of it. Offer it up, ready to push down for the final fit and, and tease through any uh, of your server wires that are there just so it's, it's nice, neat and tidy and you've not got any compressed wires inside the fuselage. Gently push it down into place, making sure that you've got a good good bond against the reinforcement strips on the fuselage sides itself. Happy with that. Push it down. Fantastic. A lovely fit. Lastly, get your ESC um, servo lead and push it through the hole um, that's already on the top. Here I'm using M77 spray adhesive. Fantastic. Quick, quick adhesion. Um, two pieces of tail spine, place it together, make sure it's nice and level um, on your flat work surface. Just apply a couple of weights on top um, just to give it that, 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 that tight weight and, and bond and, and it, glue, it, it sticks together in seconds. I think it's fantastic. Once it's dry, apply some um, Yoohoo pour to the tail spine and slot it into place on the exhaust bulkhead. Scrape away any of the excess glue. And we're about ready for the next step in the guide, which is attaching the rear fuselage boom base and the turtle deck bulkhead. On the tailpiece itself, um, there, there is markings on it just so that you can shape the boom base and the um, tail support. So just make sure, like, like we did earlier, just gently form it across the workbench and just to get the shape as close to what you need and then it's ready to apply in position. Here I had pre-glued the boom base um, tail supports with some of the Yoohoo port and allowed it 5-10 ten, ten minutes to become tacky and, and, and very sticky so that when I put it on, it's, 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 it just attaches straight away. You've got a couple of seconds to move into place and then you've got a good bond. Next step in the construction guide is the forward and rear elevator bulkheads. Following on for that, the support, support reinforcer for the bulkhead as well. For some reason, I seem to have missed it off the video. Um, didn't actually quite capture it. So here we are measuring up the push rod ready to accept the elevator swing mechanism. As we centred the arms, um, the the servos and stuff earlier, we know um, we're pretty happy that they're ready to install and in position. Here I'm fitting the retracting tail hook and happy with the position of the servo arm itself. Little spot you who pour and slide into place, pushing the servo wires through the allocated hole in the exhaust bulkhead. Trimming away part of the depron on one side of the, the tail boom where we are about to fit the elevator swing mechanism. Again, offer up the servo, make sure you're happy with the fit and it looks pretty good. Get your push rod, measure it up, have a look at it visually and just see what length, what size you need. 
um, in, in terms of the positioning of your, your servo arm and the hook itself. Here we are on to the swing mechanism. Now this can also be um, made using the 3D ply mounts that um, Craig has offered up in the designs as well for the measurements. Again, I've chose to use the 3D parts, they're fantastic. And again, it also speeds up the build. Here using the Z-Bend pliers, just getting the linkage ready for the, the swing mechanism. Offer that through. See you're happy and measure it up to the, the control rod and, and see that you're happy with the length of the push rod. On the support side, just trim a little away so that that's on the, on the servo bulkheads. Just trim a little away just so that there's free movement for your push rod. Fit your servo arm onto the end of it, the control arm. Slide in the swing mechanism and yes, happy with that fit. Looks good. Here we're offering up the sides of the swing mechanism as well. And I'm adding some, oh, I think it's three millimeter countersunk screws that I'm using just to support the sides. Unfortunately, we're off shot just there, but um, these are countersunk with an Allen key. As you're tightening it up, just make sure it's, it's a good fit, not too tight. You still want free movement in between so that there's no tension put against your elevator servo. Last and final test fit. Slide both parts into, both sides into the, um, the swing mechanism mount. Offer up the wee space in the, the bulkhead that you cut. Slide it into position and attach the control horn. Once you're happy with the final fit, a uh, nice free swing and movement, just tighten up your control horn. Final test on your radio, just before we're ready to move on to the next step um, and ensuring that you've got free movement and there's no complications, but that's looking pretty good. So the next step is fitting the working arrestor hook. As you can see here, I've again chosen to use the 3D printed parts. However, this can still be made um, using 3mm light ply pieces um, on, on the plans that Craig supplies with the, the Phantom. Here I'm using M3 uh, machine screws and, and nuts just to um, secure the, the hook uh, into the boom base. The push rod itself, Craig suggests that you use um, something flexible like um, um, piano wire, obviously to absorb any of the shock should you be landing um, and, and it catching, in my case, some grass or sticks and maybe even odd occasional tree. However, I'm using here, I think it's one millimeter um, ser servo rod, um, push rod, sorry which again, that's quite flexible. So um, I'm more than happy with that. Just bend it in to, um, just make, if you're using the, the three mil ply, just create your push rod, whether it be with the, the piano wire or whatever it is you have to hand. Um, make a hole through the boom base for it 
and pass the hook through and connect it and just make sure it works works pretty smoothly um, and once you're happy with that I use a little bit of um, blue Loctite just to secure the nut on the end um, so that through operation it, it, it doesn't free off alternatively use the 3D printed parts in the same manner here I've cut a wee hole in the, the, the boom base tail just to allow the servo um, sorry the push rod to go through to the the servo arm there's a slight bend in it just to allow it to um, reach reach the angle of the, the servo arm so that there's no obstruction and moving it across um, up and down the the, the depron trim it off um, as much as you need open it up and push it into your servo arm as the servos have all been centered happy to connect it up and secure it ready for operation finally tighten up the the screw um, on the servo arm just to secure it in place a little bit of operation on the radio fantastic closes great I've adjusted the timer so it's a slow release looks superb just adjusting um, through the radio the final position and the end point on the servo but uh, I just I, I can't wait to see it in the air happy with that let's get ready for the next step stop playing with it Now that we have the rest of our tail hook set up, it's time to move on to the wiring. I've secured the ESC and put all the servo cables and stuff through the, the bulkhead holes and tidied up as best as possible and, and secured them ready for the next step um, with the turtle deck sides and, and the rear. Uh, a wee quick point on the antenna, I've actually put a wee hole through the, the tail boom just to put the antenna wires on the other side to stop any electrical noise um, getting to the receiver to that, that, that may cause problems not that my flying skills don't cause problems themselves so here with the turtle deck sides this can be a wee bit challenging um, trying to get the right shape so I offered them up to the fuselage like with some of the pieces um, earlier in shaping what I've got here is just the edge of the board um, is, is better in the shot so that you can see what I'm doing. Gently applying some weight on the the, the far away side and, and gently dragging it over the corner of the board to slightly get the angles that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to achieve. Just take your time, it takes a bit of practice this as well. You certainly don't want it to be creased in the depron or, or leaving any long term marks. So as, as gentle as you can, just using the edge of the, the table or the board in this case, just to um, softly put in some curves. You can use a heat gun or, you know, poles, whatever it is that you um, tend to, to use and, and find more suitable. So once I've got the curves that I'm, I'm, I'm happy with, again we'll offer it up to the fuselage just as, as a test fit to see how it looks. And that's probably as close as I'm, I'm, I'm going to get and happy that when we apply some glue and secure it into place, then the next steps in securing to the, the bulkheads itself, the, the glue will hold it in place. So on the rear part, using some masking tape just on the bottom end so that when I apply the glue um, you who pour in this case um, along that seam then that's the only place I'm looking to attach things at the, at the moment if I was to try and go too far and glue everything along one part or two if not them all would, would inevitably fall out of place so here we are applying a thin bead of glue 
I actually give it some um, air curing time as well, just to allow the glue to become more tacky and get that better bond. Just ensuring the tape's nice and smooth and as 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 clean and um and fresh a, a contact I can get. Just gently offer it up into position, get as, as tight a fit as I can. Once I'm happy with the position of it, just push the contact surface in where the glue um has been placed and fold the tape over. I'm quite happy with the shape that we've got. Allow the glue time to cure and then just gently remove the tape off the side. So now that the rear piece um, has time to cure, quite happy that it's, it's, it's set pretty firm um, and I'm glad that I put the tape and things on just to hold it in place. So at this point um, I was adding some Yoohoo in there and adding a little bit more than I tend to uh, or would normally use on just the piece there but because the reason for that is due to the the curves that we've put into the depth on I just don't want it popping off as I move along the turtle deck size and, and glue on the other bulkheads so holding it and at this point I'm thinking I'm going to be holding it for a wee while so reaching for some masking tape pull out some masking tape just to secure it and hold it in place Once it's in place, again, just leave it, let, let it set, give it time to cure. Once that's ready, peel it off and see what the bond's like. Yep, happy with that as well. Time to move along to the other parts of the bulkheads. These ones are for the EDF bulkheads itself. On the turtle deck top, I'm just marking with with a pen lightly where the bottom of the turtle deck sides is is due to meet up with the fuselage. Add some Yuhu pour there just so that I get and get a nice bond there as well. See what it sets like and give it give it a wee tweak. Um touch it, move it about so there's um a bit of bond or at least glue between both surfaces before I start adding to the, the rest of the contact points on the bulkheads. Again, hold it in place. Wipe away any additional glue there. I've not used as much Yoohoo there as I did on the, the, the rear, the exhaust bulkhead, because it's all pretty flush and, and straight along there. I was quite happy and confident that it would hold in place. So the, the video has been sped up um, a short, short period of time just so that we're not sitting watching me hold it for uh, a long period of time, 10 minutes. Just using a spare tissue, I'm just wiping up any excess glue just for cleanliness along the sides of the fuselage. Onto the rear um, turtle deck sides. Again, just a wee spot of you who pour um, and just secure them in place. We wipe, wipe off any excess glue that you have round about. Helps keep it clean, um, especially when it comes to sanding. Next step in the guide is the turtle deck tops um, and the turtle deck rear. As you can see, we've pre-printed the the canopy, um, and again, this is just to helps me mark up and give some indication as to where the next part of the the depron pieces are, are due to go. You certainly don't want to be putting that on and securing it, then offering up the, the canopy and finding that it's in the wrong position. So this is turtle deck top forward. 
I've trimmed that just at the angles to um, allow it to meet up pretty close um, and, and tight with the, the rear of the, the canopy. Again, contact adhesive, touch all the surfaces and, and pull it away so that the glue becomes quite tacky. When you replace it back down, you get a good tight bond. With the Turtle Deck top rear, just add some yuho to the contact points right along the tail boom as well just ensuring all the the parts have got a nice application of glue just be careful at your swing arm that you don't put any glue um, on that would stop um, or, or affect some of the free movement you would just slide it back and forward a touch again pull it off get some tackiness you'll see some strings um, glue strings coming back from there. That's just the, the contact glue becoming um, a, a bit more um, strong and stringy and shows that you're going to get a good adhesion. Place it down. I'm securing um, uh, onto the fuselage with some masking tape again just to hold it in place to make sure um, none of the parts just pop off. As you can see the tail due to the, the bend in it. I, I didn't actually form it against the sides. Um, due to the bend, it was just trying to squeeze away. Little push, make sure any of the excess glue is wiped away with a tissue because we will be shaping and sanding it later. We all know how you pour can be quite um, troublesome um, and rubbery when we're using sandpaper. Again, some more masking tape and just tape it down and hold it in position. Here's the canopy rear. Looks pretty good fit. Um, using a pen, just marking it up, off and up to see again where I'm likely to be sanding as well, so that when um, we come to attaching it, um, we'll get a good, nice finish. Next part, exciting part for me, is in installing the fuselage um, intakes. So just mixing up a little bit of epoxy. Not, not too much at all, um, and just on the contact surfaces, around the sides. Just a nice, smooth, even application of the, the epoxy. Smear it out, just try and make sure none runs down the inside. If it does, just wipe it away with a tissue paper. A small touch on the insides where it's going to make contact with uh, the fuselage inner side panels. Offer that up. Fantastic, it looks great. And the same on the opposite side. It's just a thin application, uh, wipe away any of the excess. And again, just on the sides where it makes contact to the fuselage. Offer it up to the position that it, it looks fantastic. Oops. Some masking tape underneath. The epoxy that I'm using is 20 minute epoxy, so it gives me a bit of time to reposition them, get them in place, um, and, and ready to um, secure them with some masking tape until the epoxy um, sets and goes off on us. Just be careful and take your time when you're using um, epoxy and gluing things into position because once it's set, it's set. We certainly don't want it moving. So just a, an additional piece around the, the fronts of the intakes and this is just to help pull it into the fuselage and make sure that you know there's a good contact there. I'm just checking the inside of the intakes so that there's a smooth transition from the the intakes onto the Depron and there's no air restrictions. Moving on to the rear fuselage exhaust shields. Again, I've 3D printed these. Uh, they're, they're, they're fantastic. 
certainly if I was to um, use some Depron and um, laminate the pieces or you could use um, 3mm Depron and just shape it to um, the, the points that you want. Um, I think using the 3D printed um, STL files is, is just, again, speeds up the build um, and both sides um, are absolutely spot on. So just marking it up here where the push rod from the, the tail hook is due to go through and I'm having to cut a little relief on the the side panels there and that was probably due to um, the, the shaping and the bending that I did on the push rod just to make sure it reaches through to the servo arm pretty well. Here we are, applied some Yoohoo Pour. When it goes on, smudge it back and forward just to make sure there's a good coverage on the um, contact surfaces and we're going to have a, a good adhesion. Again, a little spot of masking tape just to squeeze them in, hold them in place until the glue cures. Now that the tail boom is close to finished, um, the next step was to add the 3D printed exhaust nozzles or the nozzles made from 3mm um, Depron. However, there's a wee bit of trimmings there and as you can see on the iPad, the step um, before doing the tail booms was to actually do the sanding. I chose to mark up where the exhaust were due to be, um, finish off the tail boom and then go through the whole sanding process um, using the jigs that Craig supplies. That way I wasn't going to um, over sand and remove some of the exhaust ports that I would um, um, probably have to use filler to, to replace and the same with the tail boom and, and shaping that final curve. However, the next step is actually doing the elevators. So here we've got the elevators laid out um, and some masking tape, the low tack masking tape that I use on the top side which on screen looks like the underside. Now I'd pre-measured the carbon spars, the 6mm spars that goes into the elevator swing arm, measured the distance that goes into the swing arm and what's offered up the elevator to it to see what distance I actually need. I think there was 76.3 or maybe 75. Um, that's what it looks like on the um, the measuring um, tool there. So mixing up a little bit of epoxy, what it did was just two equal length strips of the epoxy and hardener um, and, and give it a good thorough mix, making sure that you scrape up all the residues off the bottom. Where I would normally use some masking tape on the top, um, I was again just maybe a little overexcited and just wanted to get the pieces in and secured, ready to, well, I'm getting closer to the end of the build really, um, and just excited and wanting to see the, the finished product. So carefully um, just add, add the epoxy into the, the space there. Now just be mindful that there is um, an, an open gap at the other end so if you put in too much when you insert the the carbon spar here if you put in too much it may um, trickle out to the end um, and, and cause a problem when it comes to inserting it into the the swing arm mounts using a little bit of excess epoxy just putting it over the top of the carbon spars being careful not to put any near the end once that sets um, pull off the masking tape 
and then offer it up and just check the sizing to see that it fits leaving a little space for movements and that looks pretty good the angles were, were pretty um pretty spot on that craig's got in the plant here so once it's in i've obviously had the electrics wired up ready just to check the movements um so that it may possibly need a little trimming but i'm more than happy with the the finished product there so here we are spot of um resin and hardener thoroughly mix it up ready to attach the carbon spars for the elevator so I've turned the fuselage upside down and slightly at an angle so that just to um, ensure that the epoxy is going into the mount and I'm not wanting to use too much I don't want it you know over spilling and going over just enough to give it a good bond um, and hold the carbon carbon spars for the elevator in place Gently insert the elevators into the the housing. Give them a wee wiggle just to get them in as, as flush as you can. Looks fantastic. So here I've made a um a little jig um just with scrap pieces of depron just to um hold up the the elevators. Um so that they're not moving where the glue setting. Using a ruler um, and the uh, points on the leading edge and the trailing edge, making sure that they all align up together. Moving on to the vertical stabilizer. Once you've got that sh uh, sanded in the leading edge or trailing edge, if you choose to do so, um, just test fit it into um, the fuselage before we are about to um, set it in place using epoxy. So here I'm just a, an equal quantity um, of epoxy and hardener, just using a line, um, visually the same amount as each other. Again, give it a thorough mix. Make sure that you, you cover every area of the, the Depron where you're mixing it so that there's no parts where um, the epoxy doesn't have a hardener and vice versa so just keep scraping it up good mix scrape it up good mix um, and getting it all um, totally um, mixed thoroughly so offer it up to the fuselage and just trickle some in the, the first mount uh, sorry the first hole there on the back um, just be careful as you can see the elevator's uh, swing arm is there so just be mindful of where you add the epoxy because the last thing you want is it going into the, the swing arm all the work and care that you're taking to make sure it operates freely and looks damn sexy um, don't add um, too much glue there that, that may just fall down ooze into the, the swing arm place and seize up your control mechanism using um, just a remainder of the epoxy along the contact surfaces where um, it's going to meet up to the fuselage thin layer spread it out you don't want too much here because it'll obviously um, release onto the fuselage and spill over and it won't give you just as, as, as good a finish so just take your time be careful that you've got, you've got a nice even application offer it into place and secure it again this is 20 minute epoxy I love it the time that it needs to to set and cure and go off and you we tidy up here just trimming up a scrap piece of foam so that if there is any um, epoxy and inevitably there will be um, what I'm using is a control rod, just smoothing it along, making sure that the whole contact surface is, is, is touched. 
there's no parts where there's anything free another wee squeeze in then using the scrap piece just um, clean away any excess epoxy that's there last but not least the wingtip stabilizers here a wee spot of epoxy and a wee spot of hardener as always give it a good thorough mixing and I have some low type masking tape again underneath the control surfaces and then just gently add um, a small amount of epoxy into the, the wingtip slots. Once you're happy with that, just use the edge of the wing um, the wingtip spars. These can be used um, and made with um, two millimeter light ply or as I've done here, use the 3D printed parts. So just a wee additional dab of epoxy on the the spars itself, the, the stabilizers, and just offer them into place. Just at that point there, there was a little surplus came out, so um, I just wiped it away with my finger. Allow the epoxy to set on the, the wingtip stabilizers, and then again, just the last and final piece of epoxy mix up. Offer up some masking tape again to the, the underside of the wing. And like we did with the stabilizers, just offer up a small amount of epoxy into the slot. Again, you don't want too much in any surplus coming out over the top of the wing. Once you're happy with that, just offer up your wingtip stabilizers, slide them into place, wipe away a, a tiny wee bit of excess that was coming out there, and allow it to set. I've placed the battery underneath just to hold it in position, just to make sure that nothing slips away. And the same with the opposite side of the wingtip. Again, just a smaller amount of epoxy into the slot. Offer it in place with the, um, the, the spars. Just slide it up so it's nice and flush. And again, I use the battery underneath just to hold it in place. Voila, there you go. Congratulations. Um, a, a, a fantastic design once again by Craig. Um, if this is your first design, um, sorry, if this is your first build, um, welcome to Jetworks. And as you, I hope you can see there that it's, it's a, a very easy process. The build guide that comes along with it is fantastic, providing you follow it step by step. You won't miss a thing. Um, obviously, I've, I, I kind of jump back and forward sometimes when it comes to sanding. I'm, I'm certainly not advocating that. It's just how I build, and I'm sure we all have our own build styles. However, um, like I was saying, a fantastic model. I can't wait to get it up in the air, um, finish it off with a, a nice paint job, and possibly even some decals, homemade water slides, um, and then get it up, get some filming done, um, and hopefully stay away from the trees. So thanks again, pilots. Thanks for what, um, taking the time out to watch the video, and, and the best of luck in flying the F4 Phantom.